Cost me York School District One Board of Trustees order for executive session. Do I have a motion to go into executive session for administrative certified personnel actual matters? So I move. Have a motion by Ms. Johnson. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second by Mr. Anderson. All those in favor say aye. No, we'll now go into executive session and the general session meeting will start at 6 30.
Call this meeting to order for York School District 1 Board of Trustees General Session. I'd like to ask for the invocation, Reverend Wanden. Oh, I'm sorry. Apologize. I'm on. Sorry. I didn't come out of executive session because it's already right at 6 30. So, do I have a motion to come out of executive session? Motion by Ms. Johnson. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Mr. Anderson. All those in favor say aye. Opposed? <coughs> We are now out of executive session. No decisions were made in executive session. Now we'll go to our general session, and I will again invite Reverend, Reverend uh, Wanda Altman Sharaw, Trinity United Methodist Church from York, for the invocation. Sorry about that. <laughs> we're usually more timely than that. So. Let us pray. Father God, as we gather here tonight, Parents, educators, administrators, friends and family, we're here because we care about the children in our community. We want them to learn. We want them to be safe. We want them to know that they are loved and that they are precious in your eyes. Lord, bless all those here who work each and every day for that purpose. Watch over them and give them the strength and wisdom and ability to pass your love on to all these children. And we're going to give you the thanks and praise in all things. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. We're going to have our Pledge of Allegiance by Cadence Samuels, first grade Cotton Belt Elementary School. You can come forward. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Childers, I want to say something. Yes, ma'am. That was my school that I just attended uh, for the month. And they are excited over at Cotton. <laughs> <laughs> with them and I got to, to to witness the proudness. You just better be proud, sweetheart. <laughs> so I just had to give a shout out to Cottonville. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Let the record reflect we do have a quorum with six members present. Mr. Revels is absent. Did have confirmation and notice of media. Are any members of the media present this evening? See no members of the media that are present. We'll now move the, to the consent agenda. Do I have a, a motion for approval of the consent agenda? Second. I have a motion by Ms. Howell. I have a second by Ms. Johnson. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. We'll now go into recognitions. First off, Cotton Belt Elementary was a uh, school spotlight by Miss Megan Hoyt, principal. I'm wondering if I should adjust this for shorter people. <laughs> Good evening, Chairman Childers, Board, and Superintendent Cox. I am Megan Hoyt, proud principal of Cotton Belt, and this is my partner and assistant principal, Heather Montgomery. We are so honored and thankful to be with you tonight to share the growth that is occurring at Cotton Belt. This year, our dedicated teachers have demonstrated their commitment to stepping outside of comfort and into growth, a move that has been both challenging and rewarding. They have identified and embraced stretch goals that will strengthen their classroom instruction, and they have leveraged their strengths within their teams to ensure that our students are getting exactly what they need. We are participating in learning walks, 
collaborating across schools to experience instructional practices from our peers, focusing on quality work, participating in intentional planning time, and personalizing professional development options. As a staff, we are trusting each other, ourselves, and the process, and we are experiencing success. With staff modeling a, as a growth mindset, our students are also reaping the benefits from setting their own goals to collaborative conversations, to meaningful pr participation in small groups, to personal, personalized learning to increase achievement. We are celebrating both tiny and huge victories, honoring that every student in the building deserves an opportunity to shine and feel successful. One of our most cherished memories of the school year has been the growth parade in January. Every single student in the building shared something they were most proud of, and we had over 350 family and community members show up to cheer them on. As you watch the video, we hope you feel in our hearts and our determination to reach our students and grow together as a school. We appreciate your ongoing support, and we invite you to visit us anytime to be part of our journey. When we're growing ourselves, um, that automatically filters down into our students. We have really been focusing on is if we have that growth mindset, our students need to have the same. And how can we foster that in our students? This year, we've been focused a lot on small group instruction, so changing our focus of whole group into small group instruction um, to benefit the teacher so we're not um, doing a lot of extra work. Um, but also to benefit the students so that they're able to get what they need. From last year to this year, the difference by individualizing it has been, it's been pretty obvious um, with really focusing on pulling those kids back and having that time where they can ask questions where they don't feel like they're having to ask it in front of the entire room and they feel like I can kind of see exactly what they're doing and focus more on them individually. Some of the students that before I feel like maybe were kind of flying under the radar um, being able to move into much more challenging um, math that kind of gets them a little more excited because they don't feel like they're just kind of coasting. The goals that are posted outside of each classroom are our stretch goals. Each grade level team collectively decided that this is a goal that they would like to work on for themselves in order to grow themselves professionally and also meet their students' needs. They took a good look at what their own strengths and weaknesses were and then they decided how they wanted to push themselves. A growth goal is um, basically what, what you, you set a goal for yourself and then you try to achieve it and if you achieve that goal you can set hard goals for yourself and if you achieve that you can set hard goals for yourself and for yourself to grow. Oh my goodness, as an administrator I have grown so much this year and to push our staff and our students a little bit more but they're ready for that. They needed that. And so that's what's been wonderful. I've grown tremendously and just to see how things have just blossomed here at Con Belt. I feel like I've grown in a way of understanding that what I do is what's best for kids um, and making sure that I take um, myself out of the equation to make sure that I'm doing what the kids need. I think that we're more collaborative this year as a team because last year we were a new team. We work well together. We all have our own different strengths that we bring to the table, so we kind of complement each other in that way. Me and the other two teachers that teach third grade, we don't teach the same way. Like our style of teaching, the way we interact with the students, the way all of that stuff is different. Like it's you, you can walk across all three classrooms and you're going to see a much different environment. What I've learned this year is your, your style can be entirely different than my style, but it lives and dies at that back table with that small group. You don't have to like sacrifice your individuality as long as you're meeting with them where they are. Um, we posted those stretch goals outside of our doors because our students need to see that we're growing too. We're learning too each and every day. But we have really been trying to have conversations, not just staff to staff, but staff to student also, um, about you know what are you looking forward to? What are you working toward? What are you really proud of? What do you want to do next? Because that student voice and that ownership there is so important and we can't take that for granted. I'm proud of that other students are learning too. I feel excited just because I can tell my parents and they're gonna be like, good job, you achieved it, yay. 
the growth parade was one of it's just one of my favorite experiences I don't even know any other way to describe it um, just giving every student an opportunity to shine um, our staff members also celebrating their own growth so my goal that I had on my sign for the growth parade is that I am growing I can reach out to books I felt a little nervous and a bit excited in both all mixed in together our next step um, we've seen the success with our math groups really needs to flow over into our ELA and our small groups and looking at the standards there, unwrapping them, doing more professional development, but also the rigor and where we can go from there. I am so proud of our staff. I knew immediately just by how they jumped in that they absolutely, without a doubt, want to do what's best for kids. I would just like to say that I'm very thankful for York School District 1. I'm very thankful for the school district. I'm thankful for the school. And I'm so happy to have the opportunity to work here each and every day and love these children. I love the staff. I love Ms. Hoyt and Ms. Montgomery, and I'm very thankful um, for my time here. All right, thank you for the opportunity to share a little bit about what's going on at Cotton Belt with you and to share our hearts with you. We did not plan this heart outfit thing, <laughs> but... It is fitting because, because we do pour our hearts into what we do every day. Is there any questions for us? I was going to mention the heart. Well, <laughs> we both got here and looked at each other and were like, uh-uh. Because <laughs> I've been in Columbia all day, so we, we hadn't, this is the first we've seen each other today. <laughs> Surprise! Thank you very much. Thank y'all. Thank <laughs> Now move to student and staff recognitions. Ms. Lisa Spangler, coordinator of special projects, and Mr. Wade Anderson will be assisting with the recognition. Good evening, board members. It's great to see so many out this, this evening. Thank you for being with us. First, I'd like to invite Dr. John Tharp, who's the principal at York Comprehensive High School, to come forward as well as Coach Dean Boy, he's our football coach. Tonight, we'd like to recognize the following players who made the SCFCA 4A All-State team. If you'll come forward, gentlemen. Dalton Russell. Debo Hall, Aiden Davis, who got honorable mention, Tyler Kessler, honorable mention, Javaris Guthrie, honorable mention, Najib Yunissa, honorable mention, Hunter Lane, honorable mention. Jonathan Tobias, honorable mention. Trey Wanger, honorable mention. And Bryston Steele, honorable mention. Let's give these gentlemen a round of applause. Muscle for one picture. <laughs> okay, gentlemen, I'm going to ask you all to stay right there because now we're going to recognize um, those who were selected to play on the Region 3 4A football team. And all these gentlemen, Javaris Guthrie, if you raise your hand, you raise your hand so they'll see who you are. Hunter Lane. Aiden Davis, Dalton Russell, Tyler Kessler, Devo Hall, Najib Unister, Bryson Steele, Jonathan Tobias, Trey Wanger. Now we're going to invite a lot more to come forward. I think we, we pretty much have the whole team up here. Jay McCoy. Michael McConnell, 
Damarian Stewart. Tay McClure, honorable mention. Zane Beardsley, honorable mention. Jackson Graham, honorable mention. Alex Philbert, Philip, I'm sorry, Alex, Alex Philip, honorable mention. Tayshawn Freeman, honorable mention. And Daryl Harrison, honorable mention. Darrell, I'm sorry. I apologize. Let's give these gentlemen a round of applause. Congratulations. Right. I'd like to invite Kevin Queen to come forward, who's our Director of Transportation and Safety. And Darius Greenway. Congratulations to Ms. Greenway for earning the State of South Carolina Department of Motor Vehicles third party CDL testing certification. This allows York School District 1 to train and test school bus drivers and activity bus drivers without having to rely on going to the South Carolina Department of Motor Vehicles. CDL training and testing for school bus drivers will be much more productive and successful with Ms. Greenway serving in this capacity. Thank you, Ms. Greenway, for your hard work and dedication to York School District 1 transportation, and congratulations. Next, I'd like to call forward all the principals, Jane Wallace from Hunter Street, Megan Hoyt from Cotton Belt, Cassidy Valerino from the Middle School, Crystal Sandifer from Harold C. Johnson, Gary Ford from York One Academy, Dr. John Tharp from York Comprehensive High School, Dr. Lee Green from Floyd D. Johnson Technology Center, Maddie Hughes from Jefferson Elementary, Keith McSwain from York Intermediate, and Rebecca Dover from Hickory Grove Sharon Elementary. <laughs> I'd also like to ask members of the York School District 1 Education Foundation who are here with us, Meg Ferguson, Amber Simpson, Maria Duncan, and Becky Baker to come forward. And thank you for being here with us tonight. Tonight, we recognize our teachers who were recipients of the York School District 1 Education Foundation teacher grants. And we'd also like to thank the foundation for making these grants available for our teachers. First is Joey Costa from Hunter Street Elementary. <laughs> Catherine Horton from Cotton Belt Elementary. Elizabeth Sysak from Harold C. Johnson Elementary. Jennifer Sexton from York Middle School. Colleen Cottom from York One Academy. Jessica Gregory from York Comprehensive High School.
Angie Covington from Floyd D. Johnson Technology Center. Donna Elliott from Jefferson Elementary. Christina Gar from Jefferson Elementary. Amanda Heckert from Jefferson Elementary. Christina Lobby from Jefferson Elementary. Tierney Norris from York Intermediate School. Tara Nygaard from York Intermediate School. Abigail Trailer from Hickory Grove Sharon Elementary School. And then the grand prize winning team from York Comprehensive High School of Erica Patterson and Dean Boyd. Wow. <laughs> 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 Awesome. We'll pause for a second. <laughs> <laughs> have to wait a minute. <laughs> All right, our next award is the Multiplier Award. And I'm not going to go through the description again because we've done it up for the last month and this month too. But a Multiplier Award just means that they're multiplying their impact within our district. Our next um, is a group of nominees. And all of these people were recommended by their principal, Jane Wallace. So, Jane, why don't you come up and join us too? Just so you can, oh, Jane's not here. She's sick. Lindsay, come join us. <laughs> Our first recipient is Jenny Hill. And Jenny, can you come to me? <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Christy Patterson. <laughs> Thank you. That way I'm not running back and forth. Beth Mitchell. Courtney McSwain. Hannah Fairfax, and Paulette Moore.
well, a little tidbit of information that just came in. Um, these ladies presented, I think, to 250 people across the state today. 140. Oh, I, look, I added 100 to it. 140. I was making y'all sound even better. Listen to that. 140 people today in a Readers Are Leaders conference. So I'm very proud of them. They're taking their show on the road. But Miss Wallace had this to say about them. This team of talented, caring women have transformed Hunter Street's MTSS into a cooperative support system for both teachers and students. It started as a process to help struggling readers, but has evolved into a multi-layer system that benefits both struggling and advanced learners. During MTSS meetings, teachers are able to collaborate with in-house experts in reading, writing, math, behavior, and emotional support, OT, PT, and special education to meet the needs of the whole child. Once needs are identified, classroom teachers and the MTSS team work with students individually or in small groups. They regularly analyze data to plan and carry out the next steps for students. Strategies to add all tiers of support are improving through thoughtful reflection and the team's willingness to take risk for the benefit of every child. Congratulations, ladies. We'll now move to reports. Ms. Alyssa, Alyssa Cox and Ms. April Ulmer. I was directed by my counterpart to move this to face y'all. <laughs> All right, good evening, Chairman Childers, members of the board, Superintendent Cox. Tonight, we would like to provide you with a brief overview and report of our current standards review work that is occurring throughout our district. Oh, there we go. Okay, here you see an overview of the timeline of approval status of subject area standards and our work within the district. Our new English standards were approved by the state in early of 2023. The state has used this school year to provide extensive training sessions throughout the state for teacher leaders and district support personnel to attend with the goal of enabling district teams to lead the work in their respective districts. <clears throat> Our math standards are slated to be approved uh, in 2024, hopefully before the end of the school year. And we suspect that the state will model the same training that they did for ELA. So um, the next school year, 24-25, we would uh, be able to send some people for some extensive math training sessions being offered for district and teacher leaders throughout the state. <clears throat> this spring, so as we are currently in, uh, we are revising our science curricula mapping across the district. Our K-8 teacher leaders are collaborating to create a district curriculum map for each grade level. And then we are also conducting district-led English training with our K-12 uh, teacher leaders focused on the new English standards. And after our district-led um, train the trainer sessions, our teacher leaders will then begin developing new curriculum maps that align to those standards that were approved last school year for 2023. So we just wanted to kind of capture some of the work that is occurring this spring. Um, here you see some folks in science, um, our teacher leaders in K through eight, as well as our biology teachers are currently working to revise our current science maps to align with those standards. They're creating common units aligned with those state standards. Our biology teachers are working as a collaborative team to really dissect and analyze each standard, um, identifying the appropriate level of rigor, and then creating common assessments to determine student mastery. And so we're really proud of the work that they have um, started there at the high school. 
And here are some pictures capturing one of the first of three sessions of that English Train the Trainer after spending this year um, going to sessions throughout the state. Um, you see our district lead team, which consists of a few literacy coaches, assistant principals, and our transition coordinator are um, leading this work with K through 12 teachers, teacher leads across our district, um, through embracing our new standards, exploring those, analyzing. And what we're finding is that our teachers are really excited about the new format of the English standards. They're excited to realign our assessments. Um, they will be vetting our resources, um, our new textbooks that we have offered. Um, and they're really excited about vertically aligning those sessions. They sit in cross teams and in cross grade levels to um, really enable those vertical alignment conversations. And here is just a couple of um, pictures, and we, we spent a lot of time yesterday over at the high school also working with our math. And although we're anticipating approval of new math standards, we're still forging ahead um, with collaborative teams to really unwrap those math standards, analyze the rigor that's expected at each one of those standard levels, and we are beginning to create common unit assessments in each grade level, as well as in our algebra courses and our intermediate algebra courses. We're really trying to ensure that our questions are aligned with the rigor expected and what they will see on the SC Ready assessment, as well as on the end of course assessments. And they're vetting the resources that we currently have available to ensure that those are aligned with the depth of knowledge that's expected on those. And you heard some of that referenced in Cotton Belt Spotlight about unwrapping and kind of digging in there. So it's exciting to see the work spreading um, throughout, the state, throughout the district. And so we do believe that this collaborative work of our, our teachers this spring in those three subject areas particularly, designing those assessments, digging into the standard, determining the appropriate rigor, ensuring that we are providing instruction at that appropriate rigor are the best practices that we can have in place to ensure that our students are successful. So we thank you. That's our update. And if you have any questions regarding our work. Questions or comments? I just know, you know, you said rigor several times. Yes. And rigor and uh, know us as a board, we know how important that is. So Absolutely. Um, Reiterating is always good. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. And I guess, Ms. Omer, you're going to take the next one. Uh, yeah, I think it was, uh, I'm here as for Mr. Carper today. So I'm going to get us up and running. Um, I am here to give you an update on school registration for 2425, believe it or not. Um, it's hot and we're ready to roll. We got to get them, everybody in for next school year. It's gonna be here before we know it. So just a little update, uh, Montessori program. You know, we have a district Montessori program at Hunter Street for third, uh, three, four, and five-year-olds. And so last week on February the 5th, we hosted an in-person parent night information session. And then last Thursday the 8th, the lottery opened. So the lottery is open until February 15th, which is Thursday. It will close, and then next week, February 21st, we will run our lottery selection, and then on the 23rd, next Friday, we will uh, mail letters to the families to let them know either they're in or they're on the wait list. Um, so that's that program. Then, for all the other people besides Montessori, here's some important information for you all. So March the 4th through the 8th, is going to be our 4K, 5K registration and enrollment. And so parents will do the online enrollment process. They'll call the elementary school for um, appointment. They'll go into their um, zoned elementary school, which is where they will complete their registration process. And then on March the 5th, we will have a multilingual enrollment registration night across the district. So any multilingual family across the district can go over to Harold C. Johnson on March the 5th from 5 to 7 for us to help them with their enrollment process. On March the 18th, employee student transfer window will open. Um, May the 1st, returning student registration will open. June the 24th, we will begin district-wide transfer request for um, all students. And then, believe it or not, August the 1st 
is the first day of school. Now, one thing I want to mention for this year is we have the new registration that we're using called Final Forms. Anyone who's reg been reg doing registration with us, it will look the same. You'll click a link. It'll take you where you need to be for your child. You'll do your registration stuff. Um, but we will also support any families that need support in the registration process with this Final Forms move that we're doing. But it's all going to be from the website. Click the link, use your login and your password, get in, and it's pretty laid out for you. So that's the update that I have for you. If you have any questions, I'm here to answer. Anybody have any questions or comments? I did not say that. So um, final forms will actually support all of our families for us. But of course, we are front door. So if any, they need help, the school can help them as well. Yep. And Superintendent Cox, I guess, curiosity point for me. This is my question. I guess those who are on the wait list for Montessori, I'd be curious how many of the wait list people actually get in versus the people that get in, stay in, and you know, just kind of hang out. For this year or past? For this year. Anybody else? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Now turn it over to the Assistant Superintendent for Finance and Operations, Ms. Amy Hagner. Good evening, board members. Uh, <laughs> one, of my, one item of information for you tonight is just the res results of our food service on-site reviews. Um, Ms. Holt and myself, we started those in December and wrapped them up in January and happy to report we did not have any findings. And of course, I want to give a big shout out to our cafeteria manager and staff for the job that they do each day for our kids. And I'm happy to answer any questions if you have them. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Uh, next item is an action item um, for our Ag Arena on our architectural engineering services. Um, as reported previously, we did submit a request for qualifications back in December. Um, proposals were due mid-January. We did receive three proposals. After a review from the committee, we invited the top two firms to come in and interview with our committee. And so now we have unanim unanimously selected Jumper Carter Cease um, to handle our architectural and engineering services for the Ag Arena. And so I ask for your approval. We have a motion as recommended by administration <clears throat> for awarding the architectural and engineering services for the Ag Arena. <laughs> have a motion by Ms. Howell. Second by Ms. Johnson. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carried. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hagner. Office of Human Resources, Ms. Jennifer Bowman. Good evening again. I have one information item and five action items for you tonight. Our first item is an information item. It is a certified retirement. Okay, our next item is an action item. This is certified resignations for the end of the year. We have a motion for certified resignations for end of the year. I have a motion by Ms. Johnson. Do I have a second? Second by Ms. Faulkner. Any discussion we need to go in executive session? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carried. All right, our next item is certified retirements for the end of the year. We have a motion for certified retirements for the end of the year. Motion by Ms. Johnson with congratulations. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Anderson. Any discussion we need to go in executive session? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carried. Our next item is certified recommendations for this school year, 2023-2024. have before you certified recommendations for the 2023-2024 school year. Do I have a motion? By Johnson, as presented. Motion by Ms. Johnson, as presented. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Anderson. Any need for discussion? All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carried. 
Our next item is certified recommendations for next school year, 2024-2025. Before you, as recommended by administration for certified recommendations for the 2024-2025 school year, do I have a motion? Adopt. Have a motion by Ms. Johnson. Do I have a second? A second. Any need for discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Folks, no. Motion carried. Um, with that vote, I would to like to introduce, and if you could just please stand, Mr. Travis Miller, uh, as our new athletic director. So since he's here, I did want to recognize him. Thank you, sir. Sorry, Joey. I said sorry, Joey. <laughs> I don't think he's sorry. <laughs> All right. Sorry. We're ready? Yes, ma'am. Okay, sorry. Um, and our last item is an action item. This is for a new classified staff position. Um, I'm before you asking for the action on this item to request an additional teacher assistant at Cotton Belt Elementary um, due to some safety concerns in a special needs classroom there. Um, any further information is included in your packet. I have a motion before you. Have before you new classified position as recommended by administration. Do I have a motion? Motion by Ms. Howell as presented. Do I have a second? Second by Ms. Johnson. Any need for discussion? We need to go in executive session. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bowen. Now I'll turn it over to Office's, Office of Superintendent, Ms. Kelly Cox. Chairman Childress, board members. My first item tonight is a pleasure to talk to you about our strategic change agenda checkpoint, a community conversation. You have at your table uh, the overview that I have left for you this evening since this did not conclude until last night. I thought it may be helpful for you to have a hard copy. You also have a hard copy of our strategic Community conversation booklet. This is what we have used as we have met with the groups. I'd love for you to have an opportunity to look over that. I'm reminding you that we are approximately halfway through our five year strategic change agenda, our plan, our three district goals. If you recall, back in March of 2021, we all came together over at Harrelsey Johnson in the music room and we had participated in a capacity audit. Uh, that was led by George Thompson of the Selectee Center, where we benchmarked ourselves against the 10 capacity standards uh, that have been identified as essential in an organization that is able to sustain change and become a learning organization. When we went through that process, we identified three areas that were areas of growth for us. Um, Mr. Cooper and Mr. Wallace are in the back and they put up for me a picture so that you can have a visual of some of the work that we have done. We identified those three areas as developing a shared understanding of the need for change, developing a focus on students and the quality of work that's given to students, and fostering innovation and flexibility. Based on those three standards, which were our growth areas where we felt we needed to improve, <laughs> we developed our three district goals, the goals that hang on the wall, the goals that guide all of the work that we do. Uh, you can see them there on the bottom of page one, create a challenging and supportive educational environment that ensures readiness, readiness being the key. Create quality opportunities for ongoing learning for our students and staff in order to promote innovation and flexibility. And the third goal, build capacity and leadership at every level of the organization. Since we're at the midpoint, we brought stakeholders together. The first night was in January, January the 25th. We had a little over 60 folks here in this room. We had parents, we had community members, teachers, administrators, and students. Students were a key component of the conversation and the group we had that night was certainly very vocal. During that evening, we went through several activities to benchmark ourselves against 
those standards, those three areas of opportunity and growth. You can see those results there on the second page of the handout I have given you. Under developing a shared understanding of change, you can see that 93% of the participants felt like that's in place, but not yet fully understood. Developing a focus on students and the quality of work that's given to students, 72% of the participants felt like that was in place, but not quite fully understood. And then the last one, fostering innovation and flexibility, 71% felt it was in place, but not yet fully understood. So when we came together last night in the February session, we talked about through the lens of each of our stakeholders, as a student, as a teacher or employee, as a community member, as a parent, what needs to occur or happen or be in place for them to fully understand? What changes need to occur or what things do we need to put in place? Uh, we're compiling those results right now. Uh, they're all on posters and stickies, as you can see the group working there in the picture before you. And I look forward to sharing that with you at the board retreat on March 1 and 2. The last portion of last evening, we began our conversation around benefits-based accountability. That's a concept that I've mentioned to you before. It's sometimes called benefits-based. It's sometimes called community-based accountability. It's based on the work of John Tanner, a researcher who has really put been leading in this area saying that a, a state report card or standardized measures really don't tell us the full picture. Now I want to be real careful, and we talked about this last night, we're not saying that the report card is unimportant. We're not saying that it does not remain a focus. We're saying we want to know at a more finite level, what does it mean to be successful in York School District 1? What does a student need? to believe that they're prepared for life. What's important to the parent? What's important to the teacher? If you look at a school and you have an overall rating, be it excellent or unsatisfactory, it's just a rating. And it doesn't get to the nuances of the different groups of students in the building. Perhaps some are growing and some aren't. So how can we refine our own internal? How do we hold ourselves accountable for what the community has decided is important for us. The group that came together last night began a very robust list of things that are important to them. And then as they left, they used stickers to vote on their most important or the ones that were key to them. Again, we're compiling that for you right now. It's hanging on the wall in my office in charts and posters. Um, and I look forward to sharing that with you at your board retreat. And I think that you will find it as very useful information as you consider your own county priorities. George Thompson with the Select Peace Center will be back with us, who will be facilitating our retreat for us on March 1 and 2. And I'm happy to answer any questions because I did give that overview very quickly. Um, it was a really powerful experience. Mr. Children was able to be there for the first night. I hope that on some of the subsequent meetings, some more of you can be present. But to hear a parents or students say to them what they felt like they needed. One young man in particular last night, he's a sophomore, he was not here on the first night, he spoke up, we were having discussions about how do you know that you're ready, he raised his hand and he said, I think it's important that we have more opportunities outside of the classroom for experiences. He said, I'm in JROTC. And if I were not in JROTC, there are things that I would have never seen or had an opportunity to participate in. So it's pretty powerful to hear from the students in that regard. Questions? The group that you brought in, was that sent out to the public or was it handpicked that you sent invites to? So we have, I have a parent advisory council, standing committee, student advisory council, we have teacher forum or teacher advisory council that's made of our past teachers of the year. And we have Connected Ed Cafe. Connected Ed Cafe are teachers that have been identified as their by their principals as 
forward thinking problem solvers. They'll see a problem, but instead of complaining about it, they work to find a solution. And then each school has its own school improvement council. So the invitations went out to all of those bodies. It was about 175 people. And we had 62, I believe, on the first night, 57-ish last night. Great participation. And Wade, to your point, the first one I went to, um, trying to figure out the word I want to say, but it, there was a lot of different individuals represented. Like, I'm, students are the ones that caught my eye more than anything. You had athletes, you had people in the band, you had somebody that ran track, you had somebody that was interested in accounting, you had, you know, Kelly mentioned ROTC. So I think we got a broad spectrum in those meetings, which I thought was good to see, especially from the student. Of course, we don't know what the parents <laughs> do, but um, you know, just from a student standpoint, it was a really diverse group as far as the student population, which I thought was really good. The next item um, that I have for you is an action item, and it is an administrative res resignation. We have a motion for administrative resignation for the end of year as recommended by administration. I move for adoption. I have a motion by Ms. Johnson. Do I have a second? Second by Ms. Faulkner. Any need for discussion in executive session? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carried. The next item that I have for you are administrative <coughs> recommendations um, for the 24. 25 school year. Do I have a motion for administrative recommendations for the 2024 2025 school year as recommended by administration? So I move for adoption for the recommendation submitted. I have a motion by Ms. Johnson. Do I have a second? Second by Ms. Faulkner. Any need for discussion or executive session? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. The final item that I have for you this evening are our upcoming dates. I'd like to draw your attention first to the School Board Association Annual Convention. We will be meeting on Wednesday or Sunday of the weekend. We have three board members attending, Chairman Childers, Ms. Faulkner, and Ms. Johnson. We have intercession next week. Then on February the 27th, you'll be back for our work session, our February work session. March 1 and 2 is our board retreat, and it will be here at the district office. Note the times, 5 to 9 on Friday, and 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Saturday. March the 12th is our regular board meeting. And then I'd like to point out that there is a date change here. It is correct in your agenda, but this is a date change than what you previously received. On March the 27th, we will be having the Youth in Ag Night. This is being sponsored primarily by 4-H, but during this event, we will reveal the name and the logo of the new Ag Arena. This will be held at Clover, at their Applied Technology Center. There will be a reception at 5 p.m. and the event at 6 p.m. You will receive additional information, but I did want you to note that date. That is a date change. So that's on a Wednesday. Yes, sir. That so is on a Wednesday. So they go Tuesday, Wednesday. Yes, sir. And we will not have a work session. This in lieu of our work session. There are a lot of FFA competitions going on, and we certainly did not want to leave out the FFA teachers and students for the event. And then right after that, we will have spring break for one three months. That concludes the information that I have for you this evening. Whether we do a couple of things that we may still need to discuss, certainly not. I have a motion for executive session for contractual matters. Is there anything else that we need to do with this topic? 
other than contractual. Not that I'm aware of. Unless the board. Anybody have anything other than contractual matters? If not, we have a motion for executive session for contractual matters. Motion. Motion by Mr. McSwain. We have a second. Second by Mr. Anderson. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. We'll now go into executive session. Y'all not here when we get back. Thank you for coming.
Ready, Miss Betty? Yeah, I'm ready. So I'm going to come out of executive session. Motion to come out of executive session. Do I have a second? Second by Miss Howell. All those in favor say aye. There was no, no action was taken during executive session. Miss Cox, you will make an introduction? I would. It is my pleasure to introduce to you your new director of student services effective next school year, Mr. Kevin Queen, and your new director of transportation, Ms. Daphne McNeely. And since this is a very small room and no one is in here outside that, that oh, we've already met. Good. That's a wonderful evening. Yeah. <laughs> Do I have a motion to adjourn? So move for adjournment. Motion by Ms. Johnson to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Anderson. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. We are now adjourned.